What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of the CF Montreal Road to Glory, where we plucked CF Montreal out of the MLS and have dropped them into League 2 in the French Division. But as we saw last episode, we've already been promoted our first season in, and uh, now we'll take a look at where, uh, where we sit right now. We'll take a look at the squad hub right now, and as you can see, there's been uh, considerable growth from, uh, from last season. You can't see here for some reason. Uh, oh, I guess it's because they're away on international duty, but uh, Mihailovic went up a considerable amount. He's now 78. Uh, our big signing last season was uh, Luka Zidane, who went up 5 points to 75. And really, the only uh, the only kind of gap that stands out is the left side of the field, but it did in-game and sim-wise play pretty well. But uh, Theo Corbin was a 68 overall, and Matthew Schwanier is a 65. So we'll take a look at the, uh, the transfer targets to see if we can... Uh, Maybe not replace them, but at least get some extra support in in those positions. So here are the, the three players I've targeted for the moment. Uh, even though Kyoto played really well last season, there's absolutely zero help behind him right now with uh, some of the players that left, and Bjorn Janssen was one of them. So hopefully if I can get uh, a 77 overall rated Bafta B. Gomez in for some help, that would be great. Uh, he's currently at listed at 6.5 to 9.2. We'll see if we can get him at that, uh, that 6.5. I have also have uh, Konstantin Mavropanos from Arsenal uh, to shore up some of the center, uh, center defending position. And then, like we said, that left back spot with Konstant Konstantinos Stafilidis. Uh, I'm not making this easy on myself eh, with the, the name pronunciations. But uh, we're going to go with Konstantinos for now. And uh, he'll be the first one we approach to buy. 72 overall, de definitely getting some, uh, some depth help there. And uh, at a two million, uh, two million dollar asking fee, I think that's pretty cheap uh, to get us off started pretty well. So we'll go. We'll offer the fee of two million, and uh, hopefully just get this over the line right away. And they accept. So great start right now. Negotiate with the player again. Even though Schwanier, I mean, he played pretty well in game. Uh, and as we know, like the sim, the, the, the sim luck of, of last season, like they loved my formation, I guess, because we had a fantastic season. Oh, cool neck tattoo. Nice. Um, we're going to say important. He might want crucial. He'll go with important. We like that. That's good. Uh, he is 20, 28 years old. So let's go with a three year deal. Perfect. Disregard release clause. No, they want a release clause of 4.6. I'm going to say no because it's too it's too close and it definitely hurt us with uh, with uh, Victor Wanyama who got plucked from us without uh, without us really having a say. Um, so deny that. And he wants 13.5. The big bonus there for the clean sheets. We played well, but I don't think we kept too many clean sheets. So I'm going to give it to him. And we're just going to accept it. And there we have our, our first signing. We already signed, we signed um, uh, Umar Soleil, so we'll go for the help as from Striker first. And then if we have remaining funds, we'll go for Bavar Panos. And then we'll have uh, a pretty big center back uh, pairing uh, in the middle. Okay, Soleil, I think is 6'5". I think Mavra Panos is 6'4", so that'd be huge. So his current value is 6. So let's go 5 and see what they say. Because he isn't he is an older player now. Seven okay, well I'm definitely gonna keep the sell on clause because he's for sure gonna retire with us. Propose new fee. Let's go for that six and see what they say. Because still, again, it is a it is a lot for a player who's 36 years old. And they're not budging from that uh, 7.3. Six five. Let's uh let's see what they say. Perfect. And I actually left in an extra extra ten thousand there, so good for them. But uh, a pretty big price to pay for someone who's 36, but he is 77 overall and uh, hopefully can really help our team. So let's uh, let's get right into it. We'll see if uh, hopefully the wage about so he's going to want to play squad role crucial. OK, uh, two years. We can do that. Describe release clause. He's currently making 32, so we'll try to keep it in the same ballpark. 30, and then we'll give him, because he is high overall, it's a $400,000 bonus. And that's a fair offer, so we're off to a pretty good start. 
and it might be a little bit we're gonna hold off on Mavropanos until until either deadline day we might revisit it or maybe at the January window we'll see we'll take a quick look at the board objectives and I think it's pretty much the same not the goals themselves but like the the uh the rank of how high medium or low the objective is so we'll start with the the one high which is youth development and it's sign at least three players younger than 20 bigger with the the higher uh, potential than overall in the current position that's something we'll look more maybe to the second part of uh the season maybe get that in the january transfer window if we have leftover funds uh but we'll definitely get the sign three players in a youth uh youth academy assigned to the defender position Brandon Exposer, get 10 games with at least a goal scored in home matches this season. I think that's, again, a pretty fair a pretty fair goal. Continental success, we're not there yet. Domestic success, mid-table for Liga. So that, that might be a bit difficult. And uh, the the League Cup, Coupe Nationale, we'll see because we, got we got a tough draw last, last episode where we, we drew PSG and were eliminated before the round of 16. Uh, financial is sell two players and sign three important players to replace them. So we've actually already done two of those three, and uh, we'll look to see if we can sell uh, sell anybody. But we'll, the squad is kind of looking kind of thin, so we'll have to see about that. And then uh, the make eight million dollars profit from youth players sales within two seasons. So that's the, the long term goal. We'll we'll look, take a look at that next season. So before we take a look at the updated team sheet. I was going through the free agents and I found Jordan Lukaku just sitting there in the free agent pool uh, and we're definitely going to try to approach and sign him. He is a player that has a very good pace. Uh, he's a left uh, midfielder so he can play winger for us but he also has played left wing back before so if, uh, if anything were to happen uh, in the defense position he can slot in there as well so he's going to be a great versatile player to have. We'll go with uh, so let's see if he takes rotation. I don't think he will. Probably won't important yeah. Um, we'll go, uh, we'll accept that four years, 27. So sure. Let's, uh, agree to that disregard release clause. And then he's, he was currently or recommended was, is 18. So we'll go with 20 and, uh, 200,000 for a bonus. Let's see what they say. And that's a, a reasonable offer. So an extra, an extra piece added to, to the squad and it's, it's, it's looking uh, pretty good right now. So this is what the squad uh, looks like right now. We had only uh, Staphylidis come in and take the spot from Schoenier right away. Gomis has already dropped an overall, which is tough. Um, and uh, Kyoto has gained one. So maybe we may have uh, found the, the bench guy coming off the bench when I thought he might be a starter, but he seems to be dropping pretty quick. And then uh, Jordan Lukaku will, will slot in on, on the bench as well. So taking a look at the calendar, as you can see, preseason is never is never friendly to us. Um, but we went 0-3, so that's definitely not what you want. But uh, we'll look to turn it around once the season starts. And uh, we have four games in the, the month of August. Uh, probably the Marseille game is the one that stands out. But September has four games as well. And Lille, Lyon, uh, and then Monaco... Uh, those are four pretty big games. I think we'll be playing the Lil game because we want to see uh, what Canadian international Jonathan David can can do against us, and then uh, we'll we'll check to see the results at the end of the month of September. So here we are at the uh, the Lil game, and we're not we're not going to change anything from the team sheet we just looked at. We're going to go ahead and uh, jump right into the game. So so far it has not been a very kind start to the season. We'll take a look at the the league table after this game, but uh, we have yet to get a win. A little spoiler. So we're gonna go for a big a big home win here against uh, against Lille, well, one of the top teams in uh, in Liga. A quick note to the starting lineup: there actually was one change because due to injury, Gomis had to come in for uh, for Kyoto, who is fit now. He's on the bench, but uh, he wasn't uh, wasn't fit enough to start. Lil could be threatening early. Oh, and Zidane makes a big save. And uh, Brogiar will get that away. Could be on a counter right now. Torres could have a step here on his defender. Gonna pull this back. Could be to Gomis. Could curl that around. Oh, and he's just missed it. What a what a what an impact that would have been for Gomis, who's getting his first start on the season so far. And uh just missed that far post as the as the keeper was uh rooted to his spot. Oh, 
Brogiard could be in some trouble here. Oh, and he is. It's just a yellow. I thought I got the ball first, but it will be a yellow. And uh, I'll have to be careful the rest of the way. So far, it's been a pretty uh, pretty even game. The best chance is probably the Gomis uh, chance in the uh, first 10 minutes. Might have something going here. Brogiard, could he get there? He can. Oh, it's cleared away. Too bad. But the uh, the gap in, in skill already is... I know I'm playing one of the, the better teams in League, uh, League Arm right now, but like from League 2 to, to League 1, it's been, uh, has, as you see, a wayward pass there. But the, the skill is considerably, uh, considerably better. Can Torres keep this in? Oh, he can. Really well done. Uh, and then not, not the ball you want in. So far, it's been a pretty uh, frustrating half, but at least we've kept them at bay. Oh, this could be the last chance of the half. It is going to be Jonathan David, who's behind the Montreal defense, who's going to square it back, and thankfully he's gone nowhere. And uh, Mihailovic could just fire this away, and that'll be the end of the first half. Pretty uneventful first half, and uh, that that right there was probably the uh, the best chance, or there was a, a save that Lucas Zidane made that you expect him to make every time. And uh, Gomis for sure had the best chance for us, where he put his left-footed curling effort just wide of the far post. But to be fair, though, we are hanging with one of the big boys of, uh, of Ligue 1. So this is, uh, I guess, it's pretty positive. We just, uh, we need to find a way to, to break their defense and, and get a goal. If Gomis is onside, he could have a chance. If he, he does break away. Finds Mihailovic. Oh, and it's a big save. That's easily the best chance of the game so far. As Gomis did really well to, uh, to fight off the defender and get the ball to Mihailovic. Uh, just unfortunately, a really big save by the little keeper. Now it's Lil's turn to attack. As Gonzalez is, uh, he's made a deep run. David's away. Oh, it's well won by Soleil. Fantastic work by the defender. Oh, and Gomez could be through. I believe he stayed on side. Does he have the legs to get away? I think he does. Does he have the poise to finish? He also does. What a beautiful goal by Bafa Timmy Gomez. And that is a huge goal. And there's the classic celebration that we saw. I believe it was unleashed at Newcastle. And what a way for him to give Montreal the lead. A great ball over the top. They, they've they been allowing that, I noticed, about uh, since the half an hour mark. We finally made it count. As that's a huge goal for CF Montreal, who's still looking for their first uh, league or win. What a celebration by Baffa Timmy Gomez. Oh, Brogiard just got done. But I believe that was Gomez, who's setting up Sanchez. Who, uh, hopefully it's going to come down. Oh, that's another good ball. And it's uh, Angel Gomez again. Who this time Brogiard gets the better of him. And uh, CF Montreal could be away again on the counter. It's going to be Gomez. Oh, if you can, oh, some wasted opportunity. Oof. That was kind of glitchy. And then David's going to hit it. Oh, that was, it's a great save by uh, Zidane. And it's going to go for a corner. But what a save. What a strike by the Canadian International. We'll take another look as it was hit with power and that was uh, we're playing on ultimate so you know exactly where that's going but what a save by uh, Zidane we'll take this chance to actually make a couple subs we're gonna I know you're not supposed to change on a corner but we're taking this chance to switch out both our wingers as Corvenu and Torres will come off for Jordan Lukaku and uh, one of our up-and-coming uh, superstars we hope Zachary Cunningham it's well one away by Gomez and Soleil will uh, will hunt that down Gonna find Lukaku, and we could be uh, we could be away here. As I think it's Mihailovic again who's making a run forward. That's a good ball. It's been found by Mihailovic. Cunningham's making a far post run. If oh, that's well cut out by the keeper, as Zachary Cunningham was looking to put away his first league earned goal. We're at the dying moments of the of the game here, and we're trying to hold on for five more minutes. As uh, have they done a formation change? Because that's David out wide. No foul called, which is pretty uh, pretty lucky for us. And we could look to break as Gomez again is, is well, holding up the ball really well. Got him to Cunningham, who looked like to have his man beat, but just wasn't having any help. Look to Lukaku, well, take it on the on the volley or one touch. Comes to nothing, but we have them pinned back. We just got to hold on for two minutes of uh, injury time, and uh, hopefully we can see this one out. There's one minute gone. They'll probably have one more chance. We can make them turn this ball around. 
The ref's got, surely got to blow a whistle, and he does. What a huge win for CF Montreal. You'll see by the results of the table, that was really needed. And uh, it was nice to have uh, the big money signing Bafatimi Gomez do it, and in such style. And then you'll love to see that Bafatimi Gomez celebration. As we take a look at the league standings, we are currently sitting in 14th position with that that win against uh, Lil being our only win of the season. On, like, on a positive, we've only lost two games from eight, but we've drawn five, which has us very, very much middle of the pack. But, I mean, it, it's been it's been an up and down season so far. As you look, Lyon are sitting in 13th, Lil are sitting in 12th. So you expect a lot of a lot of things to change. What, uh, what makes sense is PSG and uh, and Marseille being top of the table. And really there isn't too many too many teams out of place, but we need to start getting some uh, some wins here just to get a few points away from uh, from danger as we do only sit two points clear of that third relegation spot. Before looking at the next batch of games, we're definitely gonna send out our scout, which I forgot to do. Um, we did France and, and Canada last time, so we'll switch it up a little bit here and we'll go, uh, what do we wanna do? No, we're gonna go to, here we go. We're gonna go to, where's Greece? I just passed it. Greece for for six months, any position. And then we will go to Italy with the other, with the other scout for six months as well. And we'll take another look at our youth academy. Nothing, uh, not a lot has changed except a lot of the potential has dipped from guys who had uh, the high end of 90 as an overall potential that are now like sitting at 84 uh, 87 88 still pretty good, but it's just the problem is their age and overalls I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna have to let go of of these three guys because the overall is just too low for where they are in their development So we have 11 more games before it takes us to the January transfer window four here in October We have four in November uh, one against uh, FC Laurent me I think I just I'll just play that one just for for the sake of playing new teams, and then we have PSG, Starone, and someone I'm not familiar with yet, so I apologize to them. But uh, I like we we need we need the sim luck to start working in our favor here as we are playing with fire with how close we are to the relegation zone. I know it's early, but still we gotta, we gotta make sure we're okay and, and try to accomplish the board uh, board goal of mid table or our goal of trying to make the Champions League. So here at the FC Lorient game, we've made a couple changes to the team from uh, from the last game, and they're all coming in the attack. Lukaku and Cunningham are both going to start as they came on as subs uh, last game, and uh, Kyoto uh, will be fit this time, and he'll be leading us up front uh, for for Bafetimi Gomis. The rest will stay the same. So as the season progresses, the sim luck has continued to be uh, unsettled. I guess we'll go with uh, on my squad as it's. A ton more draws that have gone through we've won uh, we've won one and lost one uh so far well uh, we'll see this game is big uh Lorient are three points ahead of us so if we can manage another win here that would be huge for the club well, that was a loose touch right off the start of the bat off the start of the bat i don't know what that means but kyoto could be in i think we're just gonna have a go oh and it took it took fingertips from uh, the keeper as kyoto almost had us off to a flying start two minutes in I'm convinced we can get something from here with Umar Saleh. He's 6'5". Let's get it to him. If he can get his head on this, oh, he could. Just can't direct it towards goal. And uh, Lorient will be away. And uh, hopefully we can stop the counterattack. We can. It's really just opened up here for Mihailovic. I'm going to take a hit with it. Oh, and it just goes over the bar. I thought that was destined for the top corner. What a strike. And as you can see, it just just goes over the top of the bar and skins the netting on the way down. Drogba would have been fired off of that Scott in. You know, he's hit a couple of those in his career before. Unfortunately, still nil-nil. Piet is a monster. He gets to absolutely everything. He's like, but he's like 5'6", so it's... I don't know why that's the case, but we'll take it. As leading to a counter that uh, Kyoto has just given away. Oh, and the goalie's given it to Lukaku, and he does that with it! Oh my goodness, that is unbelievable. Everything about that sequence is crazy. Look at that from the goalie and then unbelievably hit wide by Lukaku. I know he's uh, I know he's left-footed or I hope he's left-footed because that is a finish that uh, we need much better with. 
Oh, the ball's been turned over. Could Kamar Miller get back in time? Uh, he stops up his man. But Logan continue, and uh, it's well cut out by Mihailovic and Storaro, who could be on a break. Lukaku could be in. He's going to get it. He's going to get to it this time. If he goes far post, Cunningham could be there, and oh, it's just put over the bar by the youngster. I, I'm convinced that heading accuracy is not uh, is not one of his best skills, but that's uh, hopefully hit the target. CF Montreal really threatening here. We're playing a great game so far. I think our formations are is a really good counter to theirs, and it's so far in the first half an hour, it's been all CF Montreal. Could be Kyoto who's going to take a hit. Oh, and he's just sent it wide. Also, we just got to start hitting the target. If we just can if we can just hit the target, we might be leading one nil. But the way their formation is set up, all three of their defenders, their central defenders, just drop back, and it just it's like the the ocean clearing for for CF Montreal in the middle of the park. And uh, Montreal could be on the attack again. Lukaku, let's try on his left. Let's make up for that miss of the season. Oh, and I don't know what just happened there. That was just one of the FIFA 22 glitches. Look at the goalie's reaction. And then, oh, it just rattles the bar like it was supposed to go in. I don't know. But we're getting closer and closer and closer. At least we know Lukaku can hit it with his left foot. We could have another break. If Kyoto's onside, we could have something. Oh, and the keepers just beat, just beat Kyoto to the ball. And uh, there's two minutes of a stoppage time here at the half. Hopefully it comes to nothing. Or, oh, as we look to counter away, this should take us to halftime as it's uh, well into injury time. But the ref hasn't blown for it. He will now, now that I have the ball. And there it goes. It has been a great half for CF Montreal. The only thing we're missing is that end product. We have been all over FC Lorient. Their keeper has been um, adventurous to say the least. And I cannot believe, I cannot believe that mischanced by Jordan Lukaku. I think going forward, I might throw him on the right wing because that finish with your right under no pressure, having the goalie completely out of position and doing that with it is absolutely devastating. So here we go. We got us got ourselves started in the second half. We look to continue like we did in the first. Just we need that we need that end end product. I don't care who it comes from, but we just need to get the ball in the back of the net. Lukaku could be in. Has no no form of support, but has uh, unbelievably earned us the corner somehow. So so good for him. Maybe it is time we change things up. I will go. You know what? We're not changing this up. I'm very stubborn. We're going to do the exact same thing we've been going with so far. And hopefully Soleil can give us the 1-0 lead. Oh, I don't... That is a pretty pretty rude miss time. We'll have another chance. It's going to come out to Mihailovic. Who finds Lukaku. And that is going to be his last action of the game. As I am tired of these wasted chances. Oh... He had body positioning just well wide with the header. So this double change that we're going to make is basically the, the opposite of what we did last game. It'll be Torres and Corbett coming on instead of starting the last game. So hopefully the change of, of wingers can, uh, can net us a goal here as we've been around the net all game, just lack the, lack the finishing. I'll leave it to Storaro, who's going to chip it over at wide for Brogy Yard. If, Cor if Corbett on side, this could be... I, is it in? Is it? I'm not even sure what's happening. It is offside. <laughs> I was stunned. I thought it was an own goal. And then I thought Kyoto touched it to make it make it offside. But it was originally his original touch that made it offside. How do you not just stay onside there? For a, That was Corbin's first, first involvement in the game. It was almost a big assist. Oh, well won by Stafalidis. Mihailovic could be in. And it is! And we finally break the deadlock. That was That's going to be Kyoto's last action of the game as he was being subbed for Gomez. But what a sliding challenge by Stafalidis to lead to that counterattack from CF Montreal. It is just such a big weight off the shoulders right now as we've been dominating the game. Nothing has changed. Lorient have basically gotten nothing from us all game. Zidane has had to do nothing in nets. 
and finally it leads to something as Mihailovic is going to slot it past the Lorient keeper to give CF Montreal the big 1-0 lead. Yeah, and there it is. Now we see the substitution. It is uh, Gomez for Kyoto, like for like change. And uh, I, 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 was, uh, I didn't know what to do, but we have the 1-0 lead and hopefully we can hold it. Maybe even go looking for more here. So this has been uh, Lorient's best spell, but it's really just been them passing the ball around their own half as that ridiculous long pass comes in. It, they might have us uh, spread. This is easily the best build of the game. Oh, but well well won by Sole. And uh, CF Montreal should be away and clear. And even uh, free for a counterattack. Corbineau is going to be in out wide. Hopefully he can make this count. Chip it across. Could Gomez get there? He can. Is he onside? I think he is. And that's going to put it away. What a huge goal for CF Montreal. It's Gomez again. And uh, that one's going to see out the CF Montreal win for sure. As Trogba is fired up. He's been waiting for a win. And it looks like we'll be getting it for him here on this occasion. Really, it's uh, it's much deserved though. I mean, this, is, uh, this has been a game where that last string of pressure has seriously been the best they've looked all game and it didn't lead to anything but just a turnover on the edge of, of my box so really never threatened us this should uh, see us out we're way past the two minutes and there it is another huge win for cf montreal and it's been needed the sim sim luck has not been going our way so this is an absolutely massive result for the club so taking a look at the standings we now sit in seventh position the simming has gone a lot better uh, we've won, I believe, five of the last six games, and the only uh, only result that wasn't a win was a draw to PSG. So we really can't draw it up any better as our, as our manual win against uh, Lorient got it kickstarted, and uh, we now sit with 30 points, and we are only six points back of one of those. Cha or sorry, we are yeah six points back of that Champions League spot, uh, as that is the main goal. But the objective, uh, the uh, owner objective goal is mid table, so we're well above that at the moment, which is good, and we're going to continue to to look to improve and try to make it for those Champions League spots. Taking a quick look at our youth academy, I've released all the uh, the other players that we had so far, and only one has kind of piqued the interest with a 68 to 92 overall. So you never know with those; it's a huge uh, a huge gap in between. Uh, uh, of potential so we'll see what, with uh, Nilos and, and and Tony but uh, hopefully the, the scouts can find uh, can find a bit more talent for us uh, when they're in Greece and Italy last thing we'll do here is we'll take a look at oops, we'll look at the stats and uh, see who's leading the way and it's actually Jokin Torres who has 10 goals leading the way Bafetimbi Gomez has seven uh, Mihailovic has five Corbinu has four uh, even Jean LeBlanc's got a couple, um, but the Joaquin Torres having 10 is, is a great sign, and Gomez still going strong with uh, seven goals of his own. And the assist, it's uh, Georgia Mihailovic, of course, uh, the main man for, for Montreal in, in the middle. Check out clean sheets, and Lucas Adan has five. The reason why I checked this is, and this has to have come within the last uh, month or two, because... When we were going through our draw streak, there was just tons of goals being scored. Even, we even lost the game like 6-4 in the sim, which is crazy for, for a sim game. But uh, he has five clean sheets, so and he's gone up, uh, got up one stat as well. So we, we can just look to, to help him a little bit more defensively. So this is where we're going to wrap up this episode. Uh, we're, we're going strong. It's not as easy as it was in League Dur, but to be in seventh spot in our first campaign in, uh, in League Dur is a, a great uh, a great start. So if you haven't already, please like, leave a like and comment down below. It helps out a lot. Uh, subscribe if you, to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, as always, thanks again for watching.